as much as the client knows their product and as much as we know what we're doing, the only thing that matters is the person that's clicking on that ad and what are they doing when they get to the site. Hello there, my name's Rick Nusky. This is the My Future Business Show. It's wonderful to be back with you. You've had a bit of a, a bit of a break between drinks, as it were. Um, and uh, you know, it's just wonderful to be back with you. Now, if this is your first time joining us on the show, welcome. I know that you are in for a treat. Now on today's show, I have the pleasure of welcoming award-winning digital expert and founder and CEO at Pico Digital, Samantha Bedford. Welcome to the show, Samantha. Hi, Rick. Thanks for thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to it. It's an absolute pleasure having you here. Now, you and I, we're going to be talking about a whole host of different things, including pay, paid media, the impact of AI on how we market our business, and how to build an effective marketing strategy that's helping business owners achieve their growth goals. But what we do at the start of the call, Samantha, is we spend a bit of time just talking about you, learning a little bit about your life, and um, just so for a bit of context for the listeners. So where are you calling in from today? Yeah, so I am currently based in Scotland, um, about 40 minutes outside of Glasgow. Um, I've had a bit of a, a global tour, if you want to put it yes. that way. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, I was originally born in the UK, um, in England, and um, when I was about six or seven, I moved over to Cape Town, South Africa. Um, and that's where I pretty much had all of my childhood and my education, you know, that kind of thing. Um, started my first job um, in the traditional advertising industry um, out in Cape Town, South Africa, and then I got an opportunity. Um, it's a bit crazy. Um, I'll never forget my dad said to me, what are you doing? <laughs> um, because, you know, obviously South Africa is a third world country. <clears throat> And um, <laughs> and I was I was going into the digital space, um, you know. And you've got to remember, most of our houses there are still on dial-up. And um, you yeah, know, so my dad's like, "What are you doing with your career?" And this, that, and the other. And I've never looked back, to be honest. Yes, yeah, fantastic. Um, so yeah, so I got into the digital space, um, and then about I was about three or four years into the digital arena. Um, and I decided to, well, got an opportunity, um, a amazing guy, Andrew Beckman, um, gave me an opportunity to come over to the United States, um, cause obviously skills were lacking in the digital space. Mm -hmm. Um, and I had, you know, over three years, almost four years experience by then. Um, so I was able to get a specialist visa and then I moved over to Denver, Colorado. Yeah. Wow. And, um, and then about three and a half years ago, um, I, you know, um, basically with the support of my husband and my child, um, shipped them all over to Scotland. Um, and it's been interesting because I'd never been to Scotland before, none of us. Um, and we're just like, well, why not? Yeah, why <laughs> Let's not? Just do it. No. Why not? Yeah. And, um, you yeah, know, and that was basically it. We sold a house in the United States. And uh, we bought our house here in Scotland online. Oh, um, was it sight unseen? Yeah. Um, sight unseen. Oh, wow. That's a big thing, isn't it? Yeah. So we landed in Glasgow and like literally that day we landed, it was like we'll run to the bank to put the deposit in for the house because we arrived on the Wednesday and we were moving in on the Friday. Oh, goodness. <laughs> and um, the first time we saw the house was when we got the keys on the Friday. That's so it was amazing. absolutely crazy. <laughs> and um, and as I say, we'd never been here before. So it was one of those things where we really, truly, 100% embraced the digital landscape. Um, you know, to can can I ask you a move, question? Move continents. Do you yeah. think Do you think it will be your last home? Is that, or do you think you'll plan to move again? Um, I absolutely love Scotland, so I'm not sure, um, you know, but never say never. Never right? say like, never, yeah. I don't know, yeah. Tell me what, uh, you love, what, what do you love about the place the most? I'm sure it's not the weather. Um, actually, funny enough, I'm not bothered with the weather. No? Um, you know, no, I'm not bothered with it. I just feel like rain is so cleansing. Oh, yes, I agree. Um, yeah, so, and just the sound of it as well, so it's just great for Mother Nature. Like, I don't know, I just feel it. Rain is very cleansing, um, but um, 
I guess, I mean, we just really did our research well because we landed in an amazing spot. Our house is right on a river. So um, we even have a waterfall oh, coming nice. down in our backyard. Oh. In our backyard. <laughs> That's uh, incredible. You know, so, yeah. So it's just crazy. And, um, you know, the people are just amazing. They're just so, you know, they're there for you. Everybody's there for you. Absolutely. Um, now, tell you me, know, um, tell, me yeah. some, tell me something about the support of your partner. I know um, how important that can be. How much difference did it make knowing that you had the support of your loved ones? Yeah, so I think, well, my husband is, you know, he's not, um, you know, he's not usually open to change. Right. Um, so he's like the kind of kid when you go back to your family home, you know, he'll still sit at the same spot at the table that he sat when he was like two. <laughs> yep. You yeah, know, so, and whoever's in his seat needs to move. Like, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> And, um, you know, so he's just not, um, you know, that way inclined. So when we brought it up, I was surprised because it was a very joint decision. And, um, you know, as I say, I don't know. Like, I mean, it was just like out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. And, um, and he was totally on board with it. And, um, and as I say, I was, it took me by surprise. You know, it still takes me by surprise. Um, you know, because he's just a creature of habit. Yes. And, um, but um, he's also absolutely thrilled with the decision, um, loves it over here. Um, you know, so, yeah, so it's Still just working. Been all good. Same with, yeah, so, you know, same with my son. Um, you know, he's having the time of his life over here. I think he's always meant to be, because he was born in the United States, um, he is absolutely crushing it um, at rugby. Oh, and very good, you know, very and rug rugby is not a very big thing in the United States. It's getting there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, what do you um, like to do? Do you like to follow sports at all? Is that your thing? What do you do in your pastime? Yeah, um, well, I work a lot. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, in my pastime, I just love to explore. So, um, one of the reasons we love the idea of Scotland is that it's just not far from everywhere. Yep. Um, you know, so, I mean, it's like, you know, a couple of hours and you're in Spain, you know, a couple of hours you're in France, you know, like that kind of thing. It's just not, um, you know, well, when we're in the United States, it's like, you know, it's four to five hours just going from Denver to New York, yes. you know, so, yep. Yep. um, you know, cause it's just so vast. So, um, you know, I think the biggest thing for us is just getting around and exploring, um, you know, just getting out. Just getting out. Um, yeah. And that's what I enjoy doing. But also, there's just times when I'm like, the weather's just perfect. And we have a hammock, and it's right, right next to the river. Yeah. And just lying on that hammock and just sipping on a mimosa. And then I'm just, I'm good. Right. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> always right with the world. Yeah, always right with the world. <laughs> yeah. Now, I can see you, uh, you know, flicking through the pages of a, of a good novel. Do you like reading? Um, I do, um, I, you know, most of my work is, um, more along, well, most of my reading is more along the lines of like work related yep. and just, you know, leadership and improving, you know, my knowledge kind of thing. Sometimes it's just reading, you know, blogs or up-to-date stuff, yep. um, on there. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think the one thing that I've read recently, um, I believe there's a movie coming out as well, but it's the subtle art of not giving a Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, another one. <laughs> and, um, yeah, and I, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed that one. Um, you know, so I think also, you know, the environment in Scotland is just like everybody here is just like, you know, pretty casual. So down to earth. Yeah, yeah casual. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, but it sort of helps. But there's times I sit there, like we're in the process of buying a, a new car. And I'm like, in the United States, like you would just go in, like, this is the car I want. And like 48 and hours, you have a car. Yep. You know? But over here, it's like being, you know, like four weeks. So oh. it's like a real test of patience. <laughs> um, you public, know? Public transport for you. <laughs> so yeah so it's uh you know because it's laid back which is great um but as i say it's hard to kick those habits yeah well um, um tell me a little bit about um um I, I don't know about you but i enjoy getting up 
uh, early in the morning. Are you an early riser and what's your day look like? What's your routine? Yeah, um, not an early riser. Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I mean, I set my alarm for today's call so that I can actually shower <laughs> and, um, and you know, feel feel better when I'm sitting on the call. So, um, but yeah, no, not an early riser. And that's because I do a lot of work in the United States. Yeah. Um, so obviously from a time zone standpoint, it's just more important for me to be, you know, more accessible in the evening, my time. Um, you know, like late afternoon, evening versus the morning. It's like so, that, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. So I generally do a bit of a flip flop. Um, you know, where normally I'm only going to bed like about midnight, one o'clock. Yep. Um, you know, so I just wake up later. So do you, do you find that, time being, Yeah. Do you find yourself uh, find it difficult to switch off off when you want to go to sleep because you're busy minded? Uh, yes. Mm. Very much so. Yeah. Yes. How do you get, how do you get um, around that? Good question. Um, one, I live next to a river, so I have the window open and listen to the, listen river. To the river. But um, I actually um, use the four, 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 four breathing technique. Oh. Um, yeah. So it's basically, you know, breathe in for four seconds, hold for four seconds, breathe out for four seconds, hold for four seconds. You know, and mm -hmm. then obviously repeat. Um, so, and basically because you're counting and breathing at the same time, it just quietens your mind. It quietens your mind, um, yeah. Wow, that's, a, that's really yeah. good. There's people, lot, lots of people on this, on um, listening to the show that, you know, go through these similar experiences. And that's what I think the value of, of talking about, I guess, a bit about you behind the business is so important. So mm -hmm. I appreciate you sharing. Yeah. Now, when was your first experience as an entrepreneur? Mine was washing cars. Do you remember what you were doing? Um... I wouldn't say as an entrepreneur. I mean, basically, I packed bags at a shopping center. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, like, I don't know, like Tesco's, Kroger, yes, you yes. know, that kind of thing. And yep. I was the one standing behind the counter um, packing the bags. And um, anyway, this was in Cape Town, South Africa. And um, so basically what happened, a friend of mine and I... Uh, we both fell in love. We, we, oh, I was 15 at the time. Both fell in love with this like adorable like teddy bear at the store <laughs> um, next to next to the grocery store. And I was like, I want that teddy bear. And she's like, Well, so do I. And I was like, Well, I'm getting that bear. <laughs> and um, anyway, so I went in to the the. It was called Shoprite Checkers at the time. It's in South Africa. Yep. I walked in there, I applied for a job, and to be honest, I actually lied about my age <laughs> because um, you had to be 16 to work, um, and I wasn't quite 16 at the time. Wasn't far off, so it wasn't too bad of a lie. Um, <laughs> anyway, I got the job, and on my first paycheck, I went in and got that oh, damn teddy bear. I bet you did. I <laughs> <Yeah>. love it. <laughs> So, um, so yeah, so that's sort of my little thought in life, and I think I've, yeah, yeah, and I've always been, you know, striving, I yes. guess, like I've always, you know, even if it's like, you know, a little stole like a teddy bear, like, you know, I mean, I've always been working towards goals, and you, um, yeah. You definitely have a, a strong mindset. Tell me a little bit about the importance of mindset for you. Do you have any down days? And when you do... If you do, how do you, you know, navigate those days where you just want to pull the, the covers over your head? Yeah, I mean, I think it's, um, I mean, I have down days. Yep. I absolutely have down days. Um, actually, for a while there in my career, I was actually suffering a lot from um, anxiety and panic attacks. Mm -hmm. um, so it was, it was intense. It was very intense. Um you know, the, the, that's the problem, right? When you start going up the ladder in your career, um, you know, everything's so much more um, magnified. Weighing on, magnified. It's really weighing on your shoulders. Yeah. And, um, you know, and unfortunately, I took like a turn, you know, into the anxiety side of things. And um, I think some of the things I've done is um, just like those breathing techniques. <clears throat> You know, and, and, and being okay with it, being like okay just accepting it. it. Yeah. Um, you know, if you have a partner, I mean, my husband is amazing. Um, you know, whenever I was having a panic attack, it just bring me down. Yep. Other yep. techniques that I use as well is just redirecting, 
right? Oh, yeah. So, um, you know, so one of the techniques that I use is just going to the freezer and grabbing a block of ice. Um, you know, and holding it in your hand because you're redirecting that panic. Yes. <clears throat> so. Whatever works. Yeah, so that's, yeah, exactly. So, you know, it's little things like that, um, you know, that really help. Um, so I do a lot of that, but I think it's just embracing it. I think, you know, I've taken the stance ever since I started having anxiety and panic attacks of not leaving everything to the last minute. So if something comes in for work, like I take care of it, you mm -hmm. know, and it gets done. It's not like, oh, this only needs to get done, you know, by the end of the week. I don't do that anymore. Like I just like to get things done, mm -hmm. um, you know, so that if I am having a down day, I have the right to have a down day. Absolutely. And, um, you know, I have the right to sort of emotionally put my back myself back on track Yeah. because you know, if not, I'm not okay with that. Um, I just feel like I'm going to run myself into the ground. And, um, and that's not good for my team. It's not good for my clients. Um, you know, it's just not good for business in general. So yeah, um, you got to look after yourself that, first. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's a hard thing to do. Um, because you're responsible for so much. Yeah. Um, as a business owner. Um, but you know, it's taken me a long time. This is not something that was like an overnight thing for me, <laughs> um, you know, um, but it's just, it's one of those things where like, if I just need a down day, I take a down day. And I think I also look at the clock very differently. I bet you do. Right? Yeah. So, you know, the way I look at it is like, I have 24 hours, right? Like, I mean, if I need a moment or mm -hmm. I just need to, go out and you know have like a bitch session to a client you know not a client um but <laughs> yeah, sometimes, to, sometimes to a client but you know to a friend or something but like you know if i'm just having like a good chat with someone um or need a good chat with someone i go do it you don't you go do it that's everybody you, needs an hour. you just go do it and um you know and i think you know just changing your perception and your mindset on that and just actually doing it yep. um, is a big thing, um, you know, for me. Um, and just as I say, looking at those 24 hours, like, you know, if I, I need eight hours of downtime, I'm going to take eight hours take of downtime hours during of the day. Yep. And I can, you know, sit and catch up on some emails and prioritize them uh, based on that. Um, you know, and I think that's just, it's important. Um, we're living, feedback. we're living, we're living in an environment where, you know, mental health isn't spoken about a lot. We're getting there. Um, but I will openly say like, I have a mental health problem, but at the same time, you know, because I like to think of myself as a problem solver, I found techniques that work for me, um, to pull myself out of that. So, you know, that I'm, you know, predominantly in a very constructive and productive you know, mindset every day. Samantha, so, that's yeah. um, that's why I enjoy so much talking with people like you and just, you know, lifting the, I guess, lifting the lid on your life a little bit. So I really do appreciate mm -hmm. it. Now let's shift gears. Yeah. And then let's mm. tell, tell me where the name Pico Digital came from. I love that name. <laughs> well. Got to be um, a story there. Uh, it, there <laughs> is. Um, so um, it was actually a... Um, uh, a friend of mine, um, we were at a Mexican restaurant um, in Denver and we were sitting there drinking some margaritas and whatnot. And, um, you know, I think the biggest thing is, you know, once you start going up the ladder, um, and I think this is a big thing for anybody to do, is to reflect and decide whether that's what you really want to do because it's not just about money, right? Yeah. And, um, you know, and... I was sitting there and I was reflecting and I felt like, you know, I'm a senior vice president of a large, you know, digital advertising agency and am I enjoying it? And I'm like, I'm proud of my accomplishments and I love location through media, which is where I came from. Um, they're the ones who gave me the opportunity and, you know, they're a phenomenal agency. Um, but for me, I just didn't want to sit in meetings all day. I didn't want to, um, you know, just, 
not be working on the ground, you know, I wanted yeah. to run campaigns, you know, as you can tell, I'm sort of, you know, like a, a problem solver. So yeah. I like to be able to, you know, take things and, uh, you know, and turn them around. And that's where I get my kicks. And I Love just it. felt like I didn't have an opportunity for that. The, you know, the higher you go up the ladder. So yep, yep. did a lot of reflection on that. And at the end of the day, um, you know, I decided, right, it's time for me to, you know, maybe start my own thing, give it a try. Mm -hmm. um, because when I came over to the United States, um, when I was working at Location 3, there was only, you know, three of us working there. And, um, you know, and we grew that company, um, you know, to about 68 people by the time I left. Um, you know, so um, so it's a huge, huge thing. you know, honor. Yeah, a huge honor to have been a part of something like that. Um, but as I say, I needed to get back to the things I love doing, um, which is building keywords, analyzing competitors, you know, All keeping the, the ass out yeah. of competitors. Absolutely. <laughs> You know, things like that. So, um, so yeah, so in this restaurant, um, and I'm like, this is what I want to do, you know, that kind of thing. And um, anyway, so it's basically a drunk night at a Mexican restaurant in the <laughs> short story. Um, and in front of us was a bowl of pico de gallo. So anyway, so we're like, oh, let's call it pico digital. And um, anyway, so at the end of the day, that's what I called it, yes. um, just out yeah. of, you know, respect for that. But also, if you take a look at the, uh, you know, Spanish translation, pico means peak, yes. like of a mountain, yes. mm -hmm. um, you know, so I thought, oh, well, that, you know, it's a good angle for it we'll as well, instead of, junk, instead of a drunk night in a Mexican restaurant. <laughs> and um yeah so it's sort of that's what stuck so yeah, yeah. that's great Viva. thank you so very much i love these stories now i'm glad you did because uh, for context i know that you've uh, scored yourself for a long list of awards i'm wondering if you can just for the sake of context share some of them with us yeah so um well we've won a number of them most of them have been in like the seo abm um, space mostly in the b2b space mm -hmm. um, and it's basically taking a look at and um, transforming um, a client's program so a lot of what we did was for a um, manufacturing uh, tool so um, it, was, it was called infinity qs um, they've actually just been purchased right. um, by another company um, but a lot of the work we did with them i mean it's just amazing because this client um really enabled us to do what we do best yeah um you know they didn't tie our hands um you know so we were able to do loads and loads of different sort of multivariate and a b tests and you know and try things and you know i think the big thing was none of us were afraid to fail um you know so and I shouldn't say fail so much as in like completely fail. It's more yeah. like we take, we know what we're doing and we take these, you know, um, strategies. But, you know, sometimes the strategy works and sometimes it doesn't. Wins and losses. And yep. wins and losses, exactly. As long as there's more wins. Of course. And, <laughs> um, you know, so, but yeah. And at the end of the day, there's just, it just wins and wins and wins and wins. Um, you know, but you've got to go through, through some of that heartache and, you know, it was just amazing that the client enabled us to do all of that. Mm -hmm. um, and um, we had a lot of flexibility with regards to let's test this out on LinkedIn. Um, and I mean, we got to a stage on LinkedIn where um, LinkedIn put together like a competitor set for yep. us, yep. Um, a peer set. And um, essentially, the peer set was paying in this B2B specific space. Um, the peer set was paying, you know, around two hundred dollars a lead on LinkedIn, and we were paying around fifty. Oh wow! Yeah, but I mean, it just takes patience, it takes time, it takes strategy, and you know that kind of thing. So, um, but it was, it was very, very, very rewarding. And as I say, we did, we won, you know, like a lot of awards. A, a long list of them. Yeah, a very long list of awards. So, I, can I ask you? Um, yeah. I, I know that um, 
you've done a lot of different work and a lot of it would have required to have some sort of a qualification with the likes of Microsoft and Google. You've also got qualifications in those spaces as well. Tell us a little bit about the importance of those. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, Google specifically is a pretty big one for us mm -hmm. um, because it's actual Google Premier Partnership. So Google has, a, you know, different tiers of partnerships. And um, so the highest tier or highest level you can get is the premier partnership. And that's only the top 3% of advertising agencies. Wow. So it's very, very, very um, critical um, that we, um, you know, keep our standards, you know, elevated, basically. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, and going above and beyond. Based. So, and also just being a part of, you know, Google's testing environments as well. So, so lots of work that goes you know, on into that. I, I can only imagine how long it would take to go through that initial certification, then maintenance. But um, I know, yeah. I, I love this saying that the teamwork, uh, teamwork makes the dream work. Tell us a little bit about yeah. the Pico Digital team. I know that they're significant. Yeah, so on our team, we have, what's exciting for us is we have a team of about seven, eight people um, the, I say the eighth one because they're more in like the design side of things. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, they also do some other work on the side because <coughs> um, design doesn't take up a full-time position. Yep, yep. But um, we're all very experienced and passionate about the digital space. We've all got similar mindsets. Um, we don't look at it as we don't have like a tiered structure of like, this person's your, yeah, yeah. yeah, we just don't have that. We just, you know, our tier structure, basically at the top of the tier is the client. Yeah. <laughs> and we're all underneath and we do our thing. You do your thing. Um, you know, towards, uh, you know, to achieve the results for the client. Um, I think the biggest thing we do is just ensure we don't have any silos between us. Yes. Um you know, so it's important. So if I'm doing something on, you know, Google, for example, and I'm doing some multivariate or A-B testing on Google with regards to, say, landing pages or ad text and images, and, you know, the biggest thing there is like, well, what am I learning, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, what's working? What's not working? What element in all of it is, you know, maybe pulling it down? Um, you know, and trying to look for those trends. And, um, but then once I've got all of that information, you know, I mean, I wouldn't be doing any justice to the client if I'm not sharing that with every single member of the team of course, and yes. sharing it with the client's team as well mm. um, and making sure that all of that information is shared so that every single piece um, can work cohesively together and we can all learn from each other because I think, the biggest responsibility of doing paid media specifically um, is that we have a real life focus group, right? Yep. And um, and for us, like we can learn stuff, you know, relatively quickly. While SEO is a much slower process, design, you know, is like you know you've got to get it out there to test it, you know. So if we're not feeding information back, there's a lot of responsibility on paid media to share that level of information to improve SEO, to improve the website landing pages, yep. um, you know, to improve email campaigns, you know, and um, that kind of thing. So, um, Certainly yeah, a lot going so, on, isn't there? I, um, I, I wonder if I may ask, um, AI, what's your take on it? It seems to be taking over the world in a mad flurry of activity at the moment. Is it of concern to you or do you think that it's something to embrace? Um, I think it's twofold. <laughs> so it's so um, early days it's hard to tell isn't it well it's it's early days there's certain parts and i think the thing is it's like ai is just so massive mm. right um you know so i think you know looking at ai as a whole can be concerning but you've got to portion it down into how relevant is it for your specific industry you know and there's certain things that i i love about it right like um you know, AI-driven uh, bid management strategies, yep, right? Yep, Things yep. like that. Um, you know, AI optimizations on your ad copies. Um, you know, just there's loads of things that, you know, enable us, at least in our space, to um, 
I don't know, give us quicker, you know, empower quicker actions, mm -hmm. essentially. Yep. Um, you know, and sort of get things done a lot quicker. And it just gives us a lot more time to put towards like those strategic insights and like the strategic thinking. Yeah, I love it. Um, but I think the biggest challenge that I have with AI is, um, you know, AI is driven by people. <laughs> yeah. Right. So AI learns from human behavior. So people. And, um, you know, I think the challenge we have with AI as well is like, because it's learning from people, um, uh, it's also taking on, you know, people's perceptions, right. Um, and, you know, so obviously it's going to be hard to, you know, sometimes decipher what's right and what's, what's wrong, wrong yeah. you know, there are some things that, you know, AI just can't do because they are not human. No. Um, you know, and I think that's the big thing is that, you know, as much as it's improving and constantly improving, um, you know, I think it's also really, really important, um, you know, that we're thinking, I always like to say that we, we like to think of AI as heartbeat guided AI. Oh, yes. So, um, that's the term we like to use and, um, because we're all about the heartbeats. So. Mm -hmm. Um, even when we're analyzing, you know, or a client comes to us and they're like, oh, you know, um, we think these keywords or this ad copy, you know, like that kind of thing. And I'm like, well, we can make it live, but I think we should test it against this and this. Ah, because yeah. at the end of the day, you know, as much as the client knows their product and as much as we know what we're doing, the only thing that matters is the person that's clicking on that ad and what are they doing when they get to the site? Of course. Um, you know, and that's what drives the revenue for the company. That's what drives the results for us. And we continue to retain our clients. And, um, you know, so everything for us is about that heartbeat and personalizing it as much as we can. Yeah. Great. So as, as much as AI helps us a lot, at the same time, we have to make sure that our copy is written for each individual, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yep. we, we, we want to be speaking to them. We don't want it to, you know, be seen as just, you know, AI generated content. You can, you know, you can, you can generally thing. tell, can't you? I mean, um, uh, people are not silly. You've yeah. got to make sure that you've got that, like you say, the heartbeat on there. So thank you very much for sharing um, that part of, I guess, the, the story there at uh, Pico Digital. Now, well, who is your ideal yeah. client? Are you working with B2B or mm -hmm. is that small business? Who are you, who's your preferred client? Yeah, so um, I would say a large percentage of our clients are B2B. Um, mm. We've had a lot of success in that space. A lot of our awards um, are in the B2B space. And, um, you know, outside of that, um, you know, mostly the travel industry, um, healthcare, um, realty, um, you know, that kind of thing. So yep, yep. Um, we're not looking for the big giants in the world, um, you know, so we don't <laughs> want large enterprise companies, you know, we are looking at more small to medium sized businesses. Yep. Um, so I'd say anywhere from like 51 employees and, you know, max maybe 150 yep. um and um you know we're not looking for hundreds of clients no 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 we yeah. we don't want to you know i don't want to grow to a massive agency like i said to you earlier i love being able to be involved with all of our clients so you know um obviously i know that limits me from a revenue standpoint but for me, it's not about the revenue, it's about clients. Um, and it's also just about the overall digital experience. Um, you know, as I say, if, if the digital experience was shit out there, I, I might have been <laughs> in a very bad place. In bad place. <laughs> yeah, well, look, um, it's certainly um, um, an environment that, um, you know, the decision that you made some years ago now has, has been fruitful for you. And um, the, the content yeah. that you were sharing on this show is just so powerful. I really do appreciate it. Now, when you first connect with somebody, we're getting to the pointy end of the call. When we connect with uh, Pico Digital, what is the, I guess, the process for you to meet your new client where they are? How do you work that out? Yeah, um, so on our website, we actually have a go-to-market checklist. So um essentially there's two ways that we can go about working with a client we can obviously take over what they're currently doing yep. right um but while that's happening we are revamping um 
I can basically say to you that 99% of the time um, that we go and take a look at a client's account, it just isn't set up the way we would, the Pico, we call it the Piconian way, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, which is something we've sort of developed over the last 25 years, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and, you know, we basically work with what they've got right now, obviously select some low hanging fruit that we can fix, um, you know, on their current campaigns. Um, but really, we go back to the drawing board. Um, and I think it's important to do that. It's, uh, you know, I call it go, going back to basics. And um, I want to check, I want to make sure, you know, is the tracking correct? Because I think a lot of times um, people launch campaigns and then it's like a bit of a set it and forget it is yeah. what we, I normally see mm -hmm. um, happening on campaigns. Um, or the campaigns are 100% relying on AI. Um, and, um, you know, and it needs to be a solid blend. Like I say, we need to be, you know, pulling out common sense and personality and, you know, which is stuff AI just can't do. It just right? can't do it. Yeah. Um, so, and then we rebuild the campaigns. Um, and sometimes it's a staggered approach. Sometimes we just start in Google and rebuild Google. Mm -hmm. um, in LinkedIn, we usually find that the audiences are just not set up very well for testing. Yep. Um, you know, so there's a lot of changes that we make on LinkedIn usually for audience testing um, and then creative testing on LinkedIn. Um, and um, yeah, and then just trying to get as much information as we can from the client. So, um, you know, do they have like a, a, a brand Bible? Do they have um, any, did they do any sort of like surveys or anything with their current customers? Can we get that? Um, and I think one of the most important calls we ever do is actually with the sales team, um, you know, because it's really important for us to understand from the sales team, yep. you know, what are they hearing when they're on the phone? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you know, what are, why are people looking into that client's product or service? Why are they, um, you know, leaving their current, you know, vendor? Yep. Um, you know, there's just so many questions that we like to have answered because, at the end of the day, you know, we've only got a very, very, very small amount of ad space. We've only got, you know, a certain amount of text that we can use. Mm -hmm. um, and that needs to, um, the way I like to say it is basically we just need to make sure that in all of that, that first impression, um, we let that person know that we're going to, you know, solve the problem that's keeping them up at night, you know, waking them up, waking them up in sweats <laughs> yeah. um, in the <laughs> night. Um, you know, so our goal is to sort of, you know, find those nuggets in all of the information that we have. Um, and there's multiple nuggets. So which ones are we going to test first? Um, you know, because the, that's the biggest thing. There has to be a testing philosophy. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, and it needs to be consistently changing. You can't just implement a test and just set it and forget Hope for it the again. Best. So, now, I know that yeah. there's, there's certainly a journey that has to go on here. There's obviously a relationship beyond this initial contact and filling out some forms and getting to, you know, shake hands here and there. You have an ongoing yeah. relationship with people. Now, when people actually want to reach out with you, I'm pretty sure there's going to be a lot of people on the line that uh, will want to work with you. Where are they actually going to go to find you? Where's the best start point for them? Yeah, so um, obviously there's our website, um, so you can go there. Um, and as I say, if you go to the website, um, we do have a go-to-market checklist and a video that you can watch mm -hmm. as well, um, you know, going through that go-to-market checklist. So even if you're not interested in our services, just please go there because, you know, it, it, it's valuable information. It's stuff that I've, you know, how I approach things, um, you know. So um, if you're not interested in using us, that's fine, but at least help yourselves to the information, <laughs> um, you know, and make the digital environment a better place. Um, so what's you know, the actual then, URL? What's the, the, the domain? Yeah, so it's uh, Choose Pico, C-H-O-O-S-E, P-I-C-O.com. So choose Pico. And um, the other thing, obviously, reach out to me on LinkedIn, um, Samantha Bedford on LinkedIn. Um, and the other thing as well, you're welcome to just email me directly at just sam at twospico.com. 
There you go. Well, um, you can, the, you it, know, it, yeah. If, if anybody's on this call today and you've listened into this call, we literally have just scratched the surface. There is so much to talk about in terms of paid media, paid marketing, call it what you will. And I know that the team at Pico Digital have the skills that you need to get results that you are looking for. So make sure you definitely visit the website. I'll be making sure that the link is available below this call, no matter where you see it. You're definitely going to be able to get back to Samantha and a wonderful team. And with all that being said, Samantha, Thank you so very much for joining me on the My Future Business Show today. Thanks, Rick. It's been fun.